if you have your IQ, it is what it is. It's something that you are unable to change. Your EQ, your emotional quotient, or your EI, your emotional intelligence, is actually something that you can change, and it is something that you can improve. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky here. I hope you're doing really well and I'd like to say thank you for all of the support that you are showing for the show. The feedback is is warm, it's inspiring and it's just, it's wonderful. So keep it coming through now on today. Um, we're going to be talking about emotional intelligence with Diana Acuna. Welcome to the show, Diana. Thanks, Rick. Absolutely. A pleasure to have you here today. Now, um, I don't know much about emotional intelligence. And uh, for those who are, are on the show, this is going to be a real treat if you if you want to learn more, because um, Diana is a professional um, speaker and she is a coach and her specialty is emotional intelligence. And we're going to take a deep dive into that in a little while, Diana. But um, before we do that, I'd love to learn a bit more about you. I guess uh, a good place to start is, is where, where you live. Where is home for you? Home for me is Huntington Beach, California. Oh, been there. Lovely. What a place to live. Yeah, it's nice. Are you, complain. <laughs> are you a beach goer? I am. So I enjoy the beach and it's also a, a great place to jog and exercise. And it was really great outlet, uh, has been a good outlet during the pandemic. So I was very fortunate to be able to be near the water. Yeah, fantastic. I love Huntington Beach. I love all that coastline. It's just such a beautiful place. And the surf is fantastic. I remember that. That's for sure and certain. And, um, you know, do you find um, walking around a place like that, that you're inspired? That inspires me. Uh, I think, you know, connecting to getting, connecting to nature, being mm-hmm. near your nature is inspiring to me, kind of just getting away from technology and all the things that we're otherwise connected to. And also, uh, I get a lot of inspiration from, from other individuals who are thought leaders yep. um, in, in the area. So although I do like to disconnect from technology, I will say you we will often find me listening to a podcast for, <laughs> or an audible book, um, maybe on one of my jogs or walks too. So, <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. Yep. Now, I, I wonder, uh, you talked about uh, technology, Diana, um, and, 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 need, and needing to disconnect occasionally. Uh, I'd yep. love to uh, explore that in terms of how it might be impacting both negatively and positively our emotional intelligence. So we'll probably swing back around to that question a bit later on, if you don't mind. Um, sure. Now, in terms of of uh, hobbies and pastimes do you do you do anything else do you have favorite movies what's your thing oh i love to cook fantastic and i love to travel do you get much travel going on at the moment no no (laughs) (laughs) unfortunately (laughs) and i will say even further i like combining those two things together so one of my most favorite things to do i haven't done it in a while but one of my most favorite things to do is recreate a meal oh, yeah. that I've had from one of the trips that I've taken. So, uh, like, I uh, many years ago, I went to Croatia and had a really lovely seafood pasta there that I remade. And oh, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> uh, Morocco and re- tried to recreate this chicken bastilla, uh, which is like a, a puff pastry or a phyllo dough with chicken stuffing and, and powdered sugar. And so oh. it's kind of a nice way to like relive where you were, learn some some new recipes and uh, get to kind of relive the, the experience of, of the travel. So I would say those, those two things are my favorite. Yeah, wonderful. Do you have a particular cuisine that you prefer? Uh, prefer? I, like, I like it all. I would say I tend to kind of by default lean towards like French or Italian as just kind of like the base. Mm -hmm. But I love I love all kinds of cuisine, like um, Asian, Mexican, Indian. I'm, I, lo- I love it all. You love it all. Fantastic. Now, um, I always like to go back and uh, relive our childhood, as it, as it were. And I, I always think about my early days with pets. Did you ever have a pet? And if you did, what was uh, what was your fondest memory? 
Oh, I, I did. Uh, we had a few dogs growing up. Um, a German short-haired pointer and a black lab. Oh, yes. And I'm trying to think of like a, a favorite memory of... Did your lab of, drop a lot of hair? So, no. No. No she, no, she didn't actually. She was a, a smaller lab mm -hmm. and... She she didn't, and my, <laughs> funny enough, my, my stepdad was a little maniacal about animals in the house, so they weren't really allowed <laughs> to drop much hair in the house anyway, so. <laughs> Never was a problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of that. Yeah. So uh, you talked about your dad uh, momentarily there, and um, yeah. earlier you talked about mentors and growing up. Who was somebody who, uh, I guess, formed you into the person and contributed to who you've become today, do you think? I would say probably my grandparents uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. My grandma and my grandpa were both, I think, very influential and in, in who I am. They were very involved in my life as a little girl and all the way really in, into adulthood um, until they passed. Mm -hmm. And so they, from a family perspective, they were very influential in, in the woman I've become. And, and then I've had other close friends um, that I've met along the way and, and some colleague friends who have also been very supportive and, and mentored me uh, in, in ways too and, and kind of nudging me into this, you know, getting more in touch with your emotions and who you are in, in this journey that I've been on. I love grandparents. They, they take you back to another time where things were different, don't they, Diana? They, they have a different yeah. set of uh, uh, beliefs and values. And what do you think one of the things that your grandma taught you that is uh, with you today? She was a very strong and bold woman. And one of the things I always remember and take away from her was the way that she stood up for herself and who she was and her voice and the way that she communicated with my grandpa, the way that she, you know, loved him and wanted the relationship to work, but yep. also worked with him to honor who she was, yep. which I think is very unique for their generation oh, yeah. uh, of individuals because that was a little more uncommon <laughs> mm, mm. for their generation. And so I, I got to see that in her and very much yeah, it's one of my big takeaways and one of the things I admired so much about her. I really appreciate you opening up and sharing because this is what gives great context to my guests and so people can not only learn about what you do professionally, which we'll pivot to in a moment, but also a bit about you. So thank you. I, I, I wonder, um, the, the, in, in your relaxation um, time, how important, um, how much time do you give yourself away from business, away from speaking, away from, I guess, the hustle and bustle in business and how important is it for you? It is important. It's something I have to work at doing. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. But, but I, yeah, I, I do. It is important. So I, I, I'm, I will say I'm pretty good about always carving out time on weekends and having pretty good boundaries about having time just that's dedicated towards completely away from work and, and disconnecting in that regard. And even during the week too. Yeah. And particularly if I go on a vacation, for example, mm -hmm. I am really good. And that's one of the reasons why I like to go away and far away yeah. <laughs> is, to, is to really truly disconnect and immerse myself somewhere else where I'm stimulated and can learn something new and, and really get kind of get out of the normal uh, space, I guess, where I, I, I am. So I think it's really important. I think I could be better at it because I do think taking time to relax and recoup and also taking time to reflect uh, is something that I've learned is actually really added a lot of value and perspective for me yeah. uh, in my life and, and my career life. I've actually learned a lot by just taking time to sit and think and, and, uh, look back and reflect on on life in my career and and learnings along the way there's some pretty key things you've talked about there you've talked about learning reflecting meditating and all this mm -hmm. comes back down to, to mindset and I, i'd love to talk more about that um now, uh, do you read do you like reading is that a way for you to learn and stimulate your mind it totally is mm -hmm. i and i i do both i read books i also love audible because oh, yeah. i I can do that in the morning uh, as I'm getting ready and have that, you know, listening to that. I can do it while I'm in the car. And I 
I love to consume content for me. That's a good way for me to uh, get information into my brain. But I do absolutely love reading or you know consuming content via a, a book, a live yep. book. Yep. It's a great way for me to to continue to learn and to get a you know a lot of different perspectives and information on things. So mm. it is absolutely something I do. Almost every day. It's funny because I get in trouble because I've got an Audible account and I don't I don't wait for my one credit per month. I actually go yeah. in and buy other books. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting into trouble for that. Yeah. Yep. So what what types of uh, I guess audio and, and traditional books do you like? Do you is it all business or is there sci fi? What is it that you enjoy? I tend to lean towards a lot of like business and. You know, because of what I'm doing, emotional mm-hmm. intelligence type of content, because it helps keep it very front and center for me. But on a personal level, I, I love a good um, fiction or a good, oh, what's the word? Um, mystery. mystery, like a Dan Brown, for example. Like oh, I yeah. love his books and I uh, could get lost in those very easily. Yeah, because uh, I do the same thing. I waste so many hours just consuming content. I'm, I'm loving this call because, uh, again, it gives us some some idea of, of you and how you operate outside of the workplace. So thank you very much. Now, I was watching uh, your videos, uh, Diana, and you talked about uh, 90% of what sets high performers apart from their peers is emotional intelligence. And I think that's a really good segue into mm-hmm. starting to talk about the core of the of the the topic today. What is emotional intelligence and why do you believe that that's that's the case? Emotional intelligence, there's a a few components to it, but to to maybe try and quickly summarize it, emotional Mm -hmm. intelligence is, one, knowing who you are, being really self-aware of who you are and and managing your emotions, Mm -hmm. and it's also being aware of other people's emotions, being able to understand or perceive what someone else is going through and then also being able to manage that. So it, it, you could break it down into both like a personal component as well as a social component. So is this about um, not only being in tune with yourself, but also possibly intuitive when around those around you? Is, is that how this works? That's exactly right. I think you described that very well. Hmm, fantastic. There you go. <laughs> now, now, I, is it is this something? Uh, how do I know what a bench benchmark emotional intelligence is for me? Is there a number? Is there like a start point that I stick uh, my 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 pointer in the sand and say this is where I'm at with my level of emotional intelligence? That is a great question. I think a lot of people have that question. So there are, as it turns out, different ways to, quote unquote, measure yourself or to kind of gauge where you are with your emotional intelligence. So if you've ever taken a disk assessment oh, or yeah. if you've ever done like a Clifton Strength Finders, there's also um, a company called Talent Smart that has their own uh, emotional intelligence test. There's another company that is built using the science that Peter Salovey and John Mayer used. They were the two gentlemen that coined the term emotional intelligence back in the 90s. And Mm -hmm. so there's another company that's used their science to build another type of assessment to also kind of gauge uh, one's score, if you will, as it relates to four components of emotional intelligence. So there are indeed ways that you can get an assessment as to where you are in terms of your level of emotional intelligence. And I think those are all, any or all of those are a good place to start. A lot of companies, even even my company, uses DISC as a nice way, I think, for people to get, one, understand kind of themselves and and get a better understanding of self-awareness. And then two, understanding the different profiles of just the way people communicate. How they like how they communicate, how other people may communicate is another way to understand like the social awareness aspect of it. So I may be a very direct and bold person. So that's, you know, I want very succinct, concrete, you know, information, whereas somebody else might want more details and a lot more facts or or whatnot. So having that awareness and going through that exercise helps one to understand, well, this is who I am, this is how I like to be communicated to, and then also understand there are other types of people with different types of communication types. So I might want to alter 
my communication style when I'm talking to someone that has this communication style or communication preference. That's wonderful. I, I've looked through your, all of your testimonials and it's, it's uh, a credit to you, the work that you're doing. And I, I started thinking about um, your daily routines. How do you nurture uh, mm. your current level of emotional intelligence? And is that something that you, that you do every day? I try to. I'm mm. a big believer in practice, practice what you preach. And also mm. the, the whole, a, a lot of what I talk about in, in one of the, the talks that I deliver is, you know, what is emotional intelligence? And then also what are some practical things that you can do to improve in each of these areas? But at the end of the day, ultimately what it comes down to is practicing them. It's just like playing a piano or learning a sport. If you want to become more proficient or skilled or exceptional at it, it takes practice. And so there are ways that you can practice improving these areas. But it, I think it ultimately comes down to us holding ourselves accountable to that and then yep. and doing it. Yeah, that's and, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I have young children. And I, I look forward, uh, you know, every opportunity to improve their life. And I mm -hmm. think to myself, is there a crossover? Uh, is this just purely professional or can you use it in your private life as well? Oh, for sure in your private. I, I think that I first started to use this professionally. Mm -hmm. And I have found uh, this is so applicable across the board both personally and professionally. And, you know, maybe a, an example, it was we think about like the self-management and, and self-talk and stories of maybe we anticipate the way something's going to be in the future and we start to do that negative talk and yeah. it, could be about, it could be about ourselves or it could be about maybe a person or a scenario and I, it's, it's very interesting because I was just talking to some colleagues about this recently. I think that we, certainly we may, may, we may do that in the corporate space, but I find that I have a bad tendency maybe sometimes to do that in my personal life. Mm. And so it's a really good check for me to be like, oh, what's this, what's this talk? Why am I doing it? How can I, how can I change it? And a lot of it is just staying in, in, in the present moment and, and also you know, checking yourself for like, what is it about that future scenario that is giving me angst and what is exploring like what that emotion is and why do I feel like I need to be prepared for it or defensive for it or whatever the case is. And I think sometimes, you know, family dynamics, personal dynamics can, can raise that in us. Mm -hmm. So going back to a lot of these core things in terms of just understanding ourselves, why certain people trigger us, why we're anticipating that engagement and then being aware of that and reining it back in, it can go both ways in terms of both our personal and, and professional relationships. It gets me to thinking, Diana, about the locus of control, whether or not we have to control or the controls um, environmental. Do you talk a lot about that when you're, when you're speaking? That's a good question. I have yet to really talk about that or dig into that, mm. but you've given me a really good idea that I think would be worth exploring. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, because, you know, a lot of the times we, we blame things that are external to ourselves, where in, yeah. in a lot of the times I've personally found that if it's almost like if it's going to be, it's, gonna, it's up to me sort of thing. Do, would you agree with that? I would agree 100%. And one thing I will say is... I totally, totally believe in, and this is really, really hard to do and a little, well, a lot uncomfortable sometimes mm. is really, truly holding ourselves accountable for everything in our life. Yeah. And I think it's very easy to blame scenarios or blame external factors. And sometimes there may be that there, but by and large, I think, you know, it's ultimately up to ourselves to hold ourselves accountable for all of the circumstances in our lives. Hmm. And so I do believe that. And that is something that I talk about. Uh, and I do think it, to your point, it's it probably worth something and maybe illuminating and exploring. Elaborating on. That. 
yeah. yeah. on a little a little further. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And now I, I wonder, with your uh, coaching clients, um, this would be more about forging long-term relationships with them because I assume that this is not going to be an overnight process or is it immediate? Once you make a decision, <laughs> you've got emotional intelligence. How long does it, does it actually take to nurture this skill? Completely, this completely agree. Uh, long, long term, hopefully, but it, it, ultimately, I think it's up to that individual. Mm. My my recommendation in terms of like a, a coaching format and, and the way that I've worked with some of my clients is, I think first you kind of have to understand where they are and and you know what they feel like they're ready to commit to. Yeah. And then I of course have a, a recommendation in terms of I think this is kind of a baseline minimum of where we should start and here's why. And obviously it's getting to know each other and making sure we like each other and agree this is the direction that makes sense. And then just starting to go through some of the basics like you talked about in terms of where are you, where are we in terms of our emotional intelligence, what is it, to, you know, to the extent that maybe they they need just some baseline understanding of it and then depending on what we find what are the areas that we want to work on and then that becomes a discussion of okay at what frequency do we want to continue to work on those things because it is i mean for me i personally feel like this is going to be a lifelong thing that i'm always working on the the coaching i see as a way for individuals to have accountability and a, and a safe place to practice and discuss and synthesize these concepts and, and these techniques. And so for some people, it may come quicker than others, but I do, and I would expect, and certainly for myself, mm. it's been an ongoing journey and uh, unfortunately <laughs> not something that happens overnight. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You've, you've mentioned a word there that I really like and it flows on to another, uh, synthesize. Um, mm. I, and when you said that, I thought about the process of transformation now. Um, w- when people do transform and they start to recognize that they have an innate uh, a level of emotional intelligence that's not tapped into and you help them tap into that, what do you see in terms of their change? Do you see an increase in confidence? Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens? Exactly. Confidence. Confidence yields like courage and mm-hmm. bravery. It also, I think, adds clarity. In, in a lot of areas and then that can lead to improved you know productivity and focus and other some of the, the benefits that come along with those things as well yeah this is a fantastic call for anybody who's on the on the call today we'll certainly be making sure that you have links back to diana and her coaching in a little while so we'll come back to that but um diana i'm wondering um do you be- if you become like the people you hang around <laughs> does the same apply to your emotional intelligence, if uh, if you have a group of people that you hang around that are um, negative, for example, if you were to choose to hang around a new group of people that are uplifted and and you know aware and uh, on the front foot and very positive, does that have an impact, a positive imp- impact on your intelligence? Do you think? I think it most definitely could. Mm. Uh, one of the things I talk about is the fact that emotions and moods are contagious. And certainly, you know, I think if you hang around people who tend to have a higher EQ, EI, mm-hmm. hopefully that wears off on you. Yeah. And, and, you know, hopefully that, that also you see the benefits of it, you're engaged in that, in that type of behavior, and you, know, you kind of learn and see how those behavior or how those people speak, right? Their behaviors and, and how they engage in, in different scenarios. So I certainly think it absolutely could. And I think, the, you know, certainly the likewise could be true as well. Fantastic. I, I, I think about IQ, intelligence quotient, and mm-hmm. emotional intelligence, and I don't understand the difference between the two. Could you clarify that for me? Yes. So great, great question. IQ is obviously the in intelligence quotient is your IQ. That is something that will be static for your life. You have your IQ. It is what it is. It's yeah. something that you are unable to change. Your EQ, your emotional quotient, or your EI, your emotional intelligence, is actually something that you can change, and it is something that you can improve. So 
through all of this, by learning about it, by understanding what it is, by understanding what it means to you and to others, and, and ways to improve in some of the kind of the competencies of what EI is, you can actually change your EI and improve it. Thank you for sharing. I, I know that a large part of our audience are small to medium-sized business owners, startup entrepreneurs, and they'd be looking for ways to grow their EI so they can achieve excellence in their business. What are some of the practical steps that you will take your coaching clients through that maybe you could share with us? Yes, I would love to. So one, one very simple thing that I talk about in terms of self-awareness is emotional identification. That's kind of the, the core core of all of this is understanding what your emotions are. Mm-hmm. And doing that can be tricky. There, but there are a couple of easy, very simple things that you could do to try and help identify if you feel like you're having an emotion that you like or if you feel like you're having an emotion that is disruptive. You, there are these emotion wheels that actually list the names of different kinds of emotions like agony or despair or frustration or stress. And so that is a good way to maybe help you name and identify what the emotion is. Another great way might be to watch a movie or listen to music or read a book or a poem because all of those artists are really great at express expressing emotions. Yep. And that's another nice, easy way, I think, for one to help identify what emotions are. And then another uh, technique in terms of emotions and identifying them then is sim- is simply when you catch yourself having an emotion, understanding how it's feeling in your body. And that is something that is hard to do because we're feeling emotions all the time. And we have a tendency, I certainly do, to kind of push them down, especially yeah. if you don't like them. Suppress them. Exactly. However, they will resurface until we <laughs> process them. We're so, still here. <laughs> yeah, we, we need you to acknowledge us. So right. in, until you do, you know, taking a second to check in with your body, is your chest tight? Is your stomach tight? Do you have a headache? And, and eventually, you know, the emotion will pass. Uh, Jill Taylor, Dr. Jill Taylor is a Harvard brain scientist and says that it only takes 90 seconds to allow an emotion to dissipate. So if you can remember that and you have the time to actually kind of let yourself process and pass an emotion, uh, you can do it. It's certainly something that that takes practice and certainly can be uh, painful when you're in the midst of of a heavy emotion but those are those are a couple of things i would say as it relates to the self-awareness aspect yep from a oh go ahead no i was just going to say on when 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 you were talking about how you give an emotion a name Mm -hmm. um flowing on from that what you've talked about with the doctor about letting yourself feeling it and letting yourself process it would that flow into um having a level of positive self-talk and then possibly even goal setting is that related absolutely and that is really nice segue one of the things that i talk about as well and this i think touches multiple aspects of emotional intelligence is the way we talk to ourselves Hmm. and the way we talk to others Because a lot of our talk and our communication, we have a tendency to use such negative language or exclusive language like don't do this or I can't do this or I Mm. always do this. And it's and it's negative. And it also when we're talking to others or we're talking to clients, it can it can come across as defensive or maybe exclusive. And so that's one of the things that I have coached, like some of the people that I work with. And one, certainly one of the things that I talk about is learning to speak with the intent to be inclusive and eliminating that negative language, both in the way that we talk and communicate with each other, but certainly in the way that we talk to ourselves. That uh, uh, sounds like a, a long journey to reprogram somebody who would have deep-seated, uh, I guess, patterns of uh, language, wouldn't it? It is, but I will tell you a very easy way to start that reprogramming Mm -hmm. when you're communicating via email is you're typing it out so you can see it Uh, and you can go in there and edit all of your don'ts and nots (laughs) and cannots and you can change your sentences around to be, 
you know, inclusive. And for me, that was the first way that I started on that journey of learning to re, re, rewrite how I communicate. And then eventually I incorporated that into how I talk. And by and large, I try to be very thoughtful about the way I speak and write to people because I think it's really important. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic that you've said that because you, you made me giggle because I can remember a time when I was in the corporate world and I would do that. You know, you'd write your email once and uh-huh. you would be full of emotion and you'd want to yep. fire off this email. Then you go, <laughs> deep breath, hold on a second, rewrite it. And five five versions or iterations of it later, you'd decide, okay, that's tame enough. Send it out. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so with uh, what's going on in the world at the moment, um, how has it affected your speaking uh, schedule? Fortunately, because of Zoom and all of the great technology that we have to do We're things blessed. remotely, yeah, uh, you know, by and large, I'm, I'm still able to do that. I really miss, I will say, being in person with people, oh, yeah. and I'm really looking forward to getting back out. Like I said, I love travel. I like people, and I like, I, I like, you know, having an audience, and I like being face to face. And you know, for me being able to really see people in person and their facial expressions and actually being able to feel, you know, the emotion, it's it's easier to do in person than when you're on a a Zoom or some other type of remote scenario. It Mm -hmm. it works to an extent, but um, I prefer the in-person experience. So fortunately for me, it's been okay, yet I'm really looking forward to, to getting back out in person. Well, I can tell you that there's got to be a brighter day and the doors will start swinging wide open again. Those speaking engagements will come uh, rolling in for you. I'm absolutely sure and certain of that. Now, um, Diana, when people want to engage with you, they want to learn more about you, um, where are they going to go and how can they work with you? They can go to my website. It's a great place to find me, dianatalks.com. I'm also on LinkedIn. So linkedin.com forward slash Diana Acuna. And you can also find me on Twitter at Diana Talks with a little underscore at the end of it. Fantastic. Thank you very much for sharing everything that you've talked about uh, with me today. I know that the My Future Business audience will be lapping up this content and they'll be certainly reaching out to you at dianatalks.com. No matter where you see this post, you will find the links back to Diana. And Diana, thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business show today. Thank you, Rick. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.